Hi, everybody. This is Ibadi and X from The Candid Frame. You know, one of the things that I'm always thinking about when I try to make my photographs is that I want them to be more than just documenting what my subject looks like. Because I can remember when I start, first started making photographs, I would see this great subject, I would make a photograph, and then later on, when I processed the film and made the enlargement or looked at the uh, contact sheet, I would see all this other stuff that I didn't see, which almost inevitably ruined my photograph. And slowly, and not quickly enough, I began to learn that it was really important to pay attention to everything else around my subject and to really consider whether or not I wanted to include it or exclude it from my frame. One of the things I always say to my students is the whole idea is, is everything that's in your frame you own. And you have to make the decision about whether the other elements around your subject either serve your subject or detract from your subject. And so today I wanted to talk about the importance of the other things in your frame. So here are three images that illustrate that point. Our first shot is by Vasco Trancoso. This was made with a Leica Q at 1 500th of a second at 14 ISO 400. This is a beautiful, beautiful photograph of the silhouette of this older man with this cap uh, walking across this, this great wall. And the, the appeal of this shot is, of course, the great color and the sort of the graphic shapes that's created by the wall, uh, the perfect position of the silhouette uh, against the white area of the wall. But the one thing that I think that is of particular importance to the shot that really makes it work is that crack on the right-hand side. So I anticipate that Vasco probably saw the wall and saw his overall composition because the line between the yellow and the blue is perfectly centered. So I suspect that he probably found the background and the setting first and then just waited for the right subject to come into the frame. But that being said, the, the subject is really the, the, the silhouette primarily, I think. Or you could say the reverse, that it's really about the wall. But I'm going to say for now that it's really about the silhouette, the, the body language, the outline of this man that's moving into the frame from the left into the right. But the other thing here that's important is not, not just the whole wall. It's most definitely, for me, the shadow. And the reason I say that is because the blackness in that deep crack in the shadow mirrors the darkness of the silhouette, and it creates this wonderful balance between the two. I think that without that crack in the wall, the, the image would be a little imbalanced for the left-hand side of the frame, and that black to black that we see in the frame creates a wonderful balance within the overall composition that's really important to me. So when I'm looking at a scene, I'm, I'm looking beyond wanting to say, oh, this is a cool looking background, the colors are nice, you got some nice shapes. I'm thinking about, okay, when I have someone walk into the frame, how are they gonna play off of each other? Because that can often create that semblance of balance that I'm talking about. And the way that the body sort of leans in towards the center of the frame is mirrored in the way the shadow is leaning to, towards the left. They're sort of like leaning into each other helping to evoke that sense, that sense of balance. And, you know, you might think that in order to balance the, the composition, you might need another human, human, human being. But I think this image illustrates the fact that it doesn't need to be necessarily a, uh, another human being. In this case, it's just a bit of shadow that helps create that balance. And why it's so important to look for those things when you're composing your shots, especially when you're composing for the scene first and waiting for the right subject to come into the frame. Um, if you're you know, standing there making photographs, over, over a few minutes, you'll quickly realize what you'll need to have enter the frame in order to balance it. And in this case, you just had the perfect, perfect figure because I love the hat and that profile of that, that really dramatic nose and chin really helped to, to serve the shot incredibly, incredibly well. Okay, here we have a shot by Andre Bogier. This was made with a Leica monochrome at 1 750th of a second, F11 at 2500th of a second. Okay, so here we have this subject, which is this worker who is, seems to be taking a break. He's looking at his phone. And for me, 
It's the other stuff that's in the frame that helps to make the shot. Because, you know, we've talked about this in other videos, the idea of taking photographs of people on their phone. How do you make that interesting? Well, him being on his phone in and of itself isn't a particularly interesting gesture. But what makes the photograph work as well as it does? Well, we talk a lot about pattern, right? And there's an abundance of that in this shot. And we take our cue from the stripes of his pants and his jacket. We have those, those sort of white stripes that sort of adorn his, his uniform. And where else do you see those stripes? You see it on the door. You see it on the cone. And by some extension, you see it on this sort of accordion um, barrier that, uh, on the left-hand side. And even though it's not exactly the same shape, that sort of bright sort of highlight exists in this stop sign on the right-hand side of the frame. So there's this repetition of pattern that exists throughout the frame that makes the subject that much more important, but this time it's not because of who the person is or what the person's doing, it's more because it's a play on this repetition of pattern and tone that exists throughout the frame. That's what makes the shot work. If the photographer just saw this guy on the phone sitting there, Without all of these things, it would just be another guy on the phone. But when you take a step back and you start looking at it graphically, well, all of a sudden it becomes something completely different. You know, one of the ways that you can sort of tune your brain and your eye to seeing in a little different way is to not see everything literally and look at it in terms of graphicness, in terms of shape, in terms of pattern, in terms of line. When you start observing the world in that particular way, scenes like this get revealed to you. And it's, it's really exciting and revelatory when it does. Uh, sometimes when I'm struggling with, with the feeling like, ah, I can't find anything to shoot, I just pare things down to just their basic, basic elements. Light, shadow, shape, line. Those are the things I start looking for and not so much trying to find an interesting subject or an interesting scene that that appeals to me um, that might appeal to me normally i'm really going to try and force myself to just take things down to a really basic level so that i can start discovering the stuff that's right in front of me because if you've ever walked away from a day of shooting and felt like man there was just nothing to shoot i was out there with all my camera equipment walked around for hours and there was just nothing it has nothing to do with whether or not there was something worthy of being photographed, but everything to do with you not being in the correct mindset to be able to identify it, see it, and photograph it well. When you start looking at the world in this way, every opportunity that you, you, you can hope for to photograph can happen. It's not gonna, it doesn't mean that you're going to get great shots every time you go out there. God knows I've gone out there and I haven't even gotten one shot that I'm happy with. But it's the exercise of doing this that increases my chances of pulling off a really, really good shot. Okay, here we have a shot by Sayan Mukherjee. This was made with a Fuji X-T1 at 1 400th of a second, F8 ISO 500. So this is a really uh, wonderful and kind of funny shot. We have this fellow here with the beard in the lower right-hand corner. We have that arm. Uh, through the window near the top middle of the frame. And then we have that sign that says tourist, which I, I assume was like tourist office or something. And the, the subject of this shot would seem to be the bearded man, right? Because it's the human face. Our eyes are drawn to the human face first and foremost in virtually any frame that we look at. But when you start observing the frame, all of a sudden there are these different elements in the shot that play a pivotal importance to the image. There's that arm that sort of sticks out of the blackness. And then there's that little sign that says tourist there. And while I love the, uh, the repeating shapes and patterns that pervade the background, it's those three elements that create this sort of bizarreness to the image. Uh, you have this arm, there's this disembodied arm that's you know, floating in the blackness. And then you get this guy's expression. And it seems like it's either because our human brain is just wired to do this, but I start creating an association 
by his sort of his sort of expression, his sort of amused expression, and that arm sticking out of the window. And then you throw in the idea of tourist, and it's sort of like it makes it even that much more bizarre because it seems like with a face like this in a setting like this, you think it's all ideal for us cameras, us, us tourists with cameras to go, oh God, we got to photograph that face and that subject and that scene. And yet there's something just really bizarre about his expression, that arm, the sign. And I love how all that stuff that has really no relationship to each other other than the fact that they're at this same locale, uh, all of a sudden those in the confines of the frame really make a, a difference. And one of the other things that I like uh, about this shot here that creates a nice sense of balance for me is the this loop of, of string or rope here on the left hand side. It's a small thing, but as a photographer, I would be very aware of that uh, when I'm photographing the scene. And I think that this shot is incredibly well balanced. Part of that Part of that, the reason I like this is because of the triangle, right? We're always talking about triangles here that's created by that. And there's also another sort of triangle uh, created here by the presence of the, the, the tourist sign. These, this attention to these little details is what makes the shot. I have to admit that if I saw this guy's face, I think my immediate impulse is like, oh, got to make a portrait of this guy. But beyond simply wanting to make a tight headshot of a, of a subject, what I'm hoping for is that I will recognize an overall scene first and foremost, because this is the harder shot to get, right? I mean, you can slap an 85 millimeter uh, lens on, on your camera, go up to this guy, ask to make his portrait, make a nice portrait, and it may be beautiful, and it may be you know one of the best portraits you make on a trip, but after a while, it's yet just another portrait. And... What I'm hoping to do beyond making a great portrait every once in a while is to see and observe a scene in a different way. And I think the Sion here does that in a really marvelous, marvelous way by taking these disparate elements and really making them really sing together incredibly, incredibly well. Hope that's helpful to you. Uh, I'm really enjoying watching all these photographs and uh, thinking of topics to talk about on this on this video. But I wanted to do something special for you guys. Uh, since you guys, many of you have been listening to uh, my videos and for my podcast for a long time, you know that I teach a lot of free workshops with respect to photography. And I created this this course called the Candid Frame Photo Essentials ebook and video workshop and course uh, a while back. And I wanted to offer it to you at, at a discount. Normally it's uh, sold at $69, but if you use the discount code TF TCF17, you can get it for just $29. And what it is, it's a 59 page color ebook, as well as three hours of streaming video um, that has me talking about different concepts with respect to you know, exposure like shutter speed, aperture, ISO, how to get sharper images, how to control white balance, the difference between JAW, JPEG and RAW, and some basics in terms of how to uh, optimize images in Lightroom. Uh, if you're looking for something to sort of provide you a, a primer for how to more effectively capture um capture your photographs in terms of the technical side and a little bit in terms of some of the things that we talk about uh, in these weekly videos. Why don't you check it out and remember to use the discount code TCF17 to get your, uh, to get your discount. And if you've never heard of The Candid Frame before, it's a podcast which features conversations with some of the world's best established and emerging photographers from every genre from all over the world. You can check it out by going to thecandidframe.com or you can Download the Candid Frame app, which you can do by just clicking on the link on the website here for Android, iOS, and Windows. And uh, that will give you access to the entire archive of interviews that we've created over the past 10 and a half years. And uh, you can check it out. And if you want to submit images to the Candid Frame Flickr pool, all you have to do is go to the Candid Frame, go to Flickr, do a search on the Candid Frame, and just ask to be added. And just make sure that you do this on your computer rather than trying to add yourself via your tablet or your phone, because for whatever reason, you won't be able to add, uh, I won't be able to add you to the group if you go that route. So just make sure you do it on your computer, and then you can submit uh, submit images to the Candid Frame Flickr pool. And um, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.